Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending December 19th, 2020. It has been two weeks since we did the news, and so instead of doing the typical sort of read-through, we're just going to talk about some of the news of the last two weeks. And boy, has there been news the last two weeks. We're going to have to lead with this that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, that is right. You read that correctly. Funimation has announced they are acquiring Crunchyroll for a cool 1.175 billion US dollars. One billion dollars. Um, to be paid in cash at closing. No stock transfer, none of that stuff. Pure money um, for acquiring Crunchyroll. Uh, Crunchyroll noted it ha now has 3 million subscribers and 90 million registered users, so user accounts on the system, with 3 million paying subscribers. Um, we do know that before, that up until this point, Sony and Crunchyroll have been in talks. Um, uh, they, are, they were owned by AT&T, have been owned by AT&T, um, and they were offered 1.5 billion for it, and Funimation basically said, whoa. Um, they were interested in spending up to a billion uh, and then they were offered 1.5, and it looks like they settled on 1.175. A billion dollars. Obviously, there are a few more hurdles to, to jump through. But yes, that is a thing that's going to happen, apparently. One Funimation to rule them all. Jeez. And it's not even a stock exchange. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the unprecedented it's, uh, part. It's like, this is... Anime string. This is you know all the the platform that Crunchyroll has built over time from a sort of shady app to, yeah. to what they are today uh -huh. to get a billion in cash. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the fact and the fact how where did the wow. negotiators get going? Okay, this is gonna be a cash transaction, and everyone just went okay, sure. Because <laughs> that's yeah. In this briefcase that? here, I have money. Will you accept it? Sure. Is it dirty money? Don't ask questions. <laughs> no, <laughs> take I'm, sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Ignore the blood. Go ahead. No, ask no. Questions. All right. Let's 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 not cast aspersions <laughs> on Funimation here. Well, the question in my mind is: given that Funimation, mm. you know, they started a distribution, didn't they? Yeah. So licensing, distribution, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Does right. the acquisition of Crunchyroll now give them the ability to shut off? Funimation streaming and say we're done. Mm. Mm -hmm. We started doing licensing and all this other stuff, yeah. and we just sort of we got into this. And now that we have Crunchyroll, we can dump all of the catalog, everything onto you guys. You guys don't license anything. Don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. We'll handle all the back house work. You just stream and you manage the platform. Yeah, mm -hmm. because that it seemed like that, a, that's that's say the smartest thing to do. Yeah, fairly decent like, rather than competing, no. trying to cut each other's throats and stuff. And we were talking about this on, on the Discord. Um, the other thing about this is that Japanese businesses are famously stereotypically conservative, not all, but commonly, right. um, and they really um, like working with established businesses that are kind of known quantities. Having an industry that is more consolidated might be a lot more attractive to those interests. I was saying, okay, there is one funny role. They should call it that. Um, that we work with. Yeah. Um, that we work with. They have everything. We know that they, you know, they have all the resources, all the stuff, and so we can kind of, you know, put our anime uh, in their laps with, with confidence. Um, compared to a somewhat more right. fractured industry. So that could also be one of the reasons behind it is let's just consolidate. Um, and also, like, Crunchyroll is investing a lot in original series. And I can see Funimation wanted to get in on that, of saying, oh, that's that has so much profit potential um, that that could, could really, you know, do nice things in future. Uh, which I think is why they're valuing it at $1 billion dollars. Just amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, and in fairness, like, again, three million paying subscribers, nothing to, to sneeze at. Like, they, they clearly have have revenue. Um, things are happening there. Um, but it's hard to say. Um, well, um, it's good to see when a, when a rough, scrappy little, <laughs> little 
app with questionable background goes legit and becomes exactly. a big time player. Yep. Good on him. <laughs> so it is no longer you should be watching, it is you will be watching at Funimation. Pretty much. Um, so obviously more to come on that as we hear um, more details about um, uh, apparently anime being worth some money. Uh, speaking of, um, we have, uh, speaking of, um, of, uh, of anime projects, um, Momoro Hosoda has announced his next film um, uh, that is going to be called Bell in English, but as is so typical with these things, um, the Japanese title is Ryu to Sobakasu no Hime, which is literally The Princess of Dragons and Freckles, possibly my favorite title of all time. Um, it'll be opening in Japan this summer, so not too long to wait. Um, it is, uh, the film will be about an online world um, that is ever-evolving, um, which has 5 billion registered users, so basically Facebook. Um, and uh, apparently, in the, the, the uh, announcement mentions like Summer Wars and uh, Digimon, was it Children's War, Ga Children's War Game? Uh, both Moro Soda films with these themes of yeah. online worlds and dealing with things and, and you know, fighting threats to online worlds and such. So kind of going back to the well in that yeah. sense. Um, have you guys, what, what Hosoda films have you guys seen? What exposure do you have to, to this man's oeuvre? Summer Wars. There we go. <laughs> I, I oh, like so I don't know oh, yeah. you know if if it's going to be uh, somewhat like that I don't know what sort of things I've seen but if, at least I if I got some kind of idea off of Summer Wars mm -hmm. you know what I mean that that would be interesting yeah. um, I, I'll watch it I mean yeah I'll be curious to see because when Phil and I sat down and watched Summer Wars I was floored mm -hmm. so if it's like that I'll be floored by yeah. whatever this is. so <laughs> Digimon Children's War? I'm not, I, no clue. This is the second Digimon film, um, but they were like half hour movies, basically. Um, okay. At least in theaters. Um, if you've seen Digimon the movie, which who hasn't? Um, um, that was basically, <laughs> that was basically the first three Digimon movies all smashed up into one rather confusing film. Um, so the middle segment of that, for, for those out there who've seen that, that is Children's War Game. So you've seen Summer Wars, you've seen this. I've does seen that a... say, ha, dropping those names, does that give you a clue where this is going to go? Oh, yeah. Um, it's probably going to be everyone's in it. It's going to be Summer Wars, basically, but but a different real-world plot. But I'm sure it's going to be, <laughs> here's this big digital world, everyone's connecting all together, there's a threat, we have to deal with it. Um, okay. And we'll see what, what, what that is. Um, what I like about Hasoda is that he's always been smart when dealing with those things and making them abstract, where he's not trying to represent what an actual online world would be like to interact with. It's not, okay. here's the VR interface, you know? It's just, we, we go in and we have this completely right. abstract visual representation of everything to get to the themes of connection and relationship and so forth and so on. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm hopeful. Um, his films are wonderful. Um, he is, he might be the next Hayao Miyazaki if we choose to use that sort of comparison. Um, but Really? Wait, uh, but what, else, what have I seen? I don't what know. What have I seen by him? <laughs> um, Near Eye, uh, The Girl Who Left Through Time, um, The Boy and the Beast. The Girl Left Through Time. Okay, that was his first film. Uh, the Boy and the Beast, um, Wolf's Children. And no. I, I do think want to that one though. Yeah, they're all wonderful. Um, Wolf Children is, is the saddest one. Be aware. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're 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 all very they're all very much family fantasy films. You know, so very much in that sort of Studio Ghibli slot. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked the the way that they handled the girl who left through time with, yeah. with consequences that she faces. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, for a first film, that is a dang fine outing. That's yeah. that's an impressive piece of work. Um, so yeah, that's that's yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. And in like six months, that's great. Yeah. 
Um, speaking of giant media conglomerates from the previous stories, Disney has announced um, uh, a new project called Star Wars Visions with a logo straight out of 1996. Um, it is an original series of short anime films set in the Star Wars universe. Uh, they've attached the world's best Japanese anime creators. It'll launch next year. That's all we know, <laughs> basically. Um, but um, I, I get the sense that somebody saw Animatrix and said, do that! More of that. That'll work. Um, who knows? That a dump truck full of money. Make right. it happen. <laughs> exactly. So, it, it, um, uh, before I, I get into this, um, because if you heard me going, yep, yep, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. Anyway, um, somebody in chat land asked about is HBO Max worth, and mm. I just wanted to address that real quick. Yeah. Um, I, I just signed up for it a couple days ago, mm. actually, when it was available on Roku, so it's a little buggy right now. So, if you want to wait like a week or two before the, everything gets kind of settled down mm. with everybody, you know, buying into it and the platform yeah. working. Um, it kind of depends on uh, what you're looking for. It has a lot of good uh, stuff on it with uh, like uh, Turner Classic Movies, mm. DC stuff on there, uh, you know, regular HBO, the, the stuff that they do themselves, um, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim. Mm -hmm. The Crunchyroll, as I alluded before, is on there, but it's, it, it is a limited format that might grow. I have mm -hmm. a feeling that a lot of this stuff is, is going to grow. So, um, to the person who asked uh, if HBO Max is worth it, I think the potential is definitely there. But just give it a week before you, it's yeah. for all the bugs to work out. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, as far as the Star Wars stuff it is, of course, for those of us who are, are Star Wars geeks, um, Mandalorian just finished up and the, the saga of Baby Yoda is more or less finished. <laughs> um, but there is a lot of things coming out on related to Star Wars. And I'm kind of wondering if this anime thing is related to... And they showed it a couple times at Otakon at the fan subs, mm. you know, late at night, 11 o'clock, which is the TIE Fighter. Yeah. Uh, it's about seven minutes. It's about seven minutes yes. long, which is actually has been remastered and it's actually really, really good. Mm. Um, so mm. I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be along mm. those lines. And yeah. if it is, then it actually really should be pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. for context, um, a, an, an independent animator made this like seven minute TIE Fighter short film that's entirely animated. 2D animated, gorgeously done. Um, he actually did an earlier one, which was a um, like a Sega Genesis fighting game, like sequence. That's right, yeah. So it's like the you know the opening um, uh, sequence, and then your know, characters sort of teleport in, and then walk around fighting mummies and things. It's the kind of picture perfect recreation of like a Sega Genesis game. Um, and they did this Tie Fighter thing, which is just mind blowing. Um, and there's there's also out there on YouTube. 10 minute shorts retelling of the first three well oh. uh was it four five and six mm. of four, five, six, yeah. uh, of of star wars but done in an anime format it's very condensed it's only about 10 minutes per mm. but maybe it might be connected to oh. that as well yeah. um <laughs> if nothing else it's really interesting in here seeing disney basically say what's hot oh anime like basically, yeah. That's that's kind of the appeal. Is oh, people will, will, will show up for this anime thing. <laughs> yes, they will. Um, so oh, that ne headline next year: Disney pays two point eight billion dollars <laughs> right. for, for Tony Roll. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, uh, <Tony> roll. <laughs> yep. And now and, Disney owns anime and everything else. Mm, <laughs> yep, it'll. Oh, now I'm depressed. Um. Um. <laughs> Speaking of and happy. Speaking of massive internet corporate overlords, Netflix has uh, revealed that this is actually uh, rather interesting. Um, anime viewership was up over one hundred percent in the United States um, on its platform this year. Um, you might wonder what caused that. What was the the what was the big anime released on Netflix this year that caused everyone to just tune in and watch it? It's Pokemon. It's always Pokemon. It's not always Pokemon, but Pokemon's one of the big drivers. Uh, the Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Great. Back Evolution <laughs> film was the most watched anime title this year. Um, it also said that the Blood of Zeus was um, also uh, uh, highly watched on Netflix in 2020. 
Um, now, what's also uh, uh, intrigued me is that, um, according to Vice President of Content at Netflix India, Monica Shergo, um, anime viewership also doubled across Asia in 2020. So it's not just the U.S. turning in, it's also the, that Asian continent, which has a lot of people in it, um, they are also tuning in for the Japanimation, which I think is, is pretty cool. It is kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to say Mugen Train, though. Yeah, I know. I was waiting for you to be it's like... not on Netflix yet. <laughs> when Netflix, you know, here we go. When it comes on Netflix, that's when it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I, you I, can I, still watch Demon Slayer. Is that on Netflix? I don't... Yeah, I don't think... No, I think it's that's a fun yeah, mission, it? <clears throat> That Yeah, that probably yeah. is. Um, because that could drive that the people are hearing yeah. about Mugen Train. They're yeah. watching, you know, Demon Slayer. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're getting ready for this. And be like, okay, yeah. that would drive it. Yep. Yeah, and we have more Mugen Train story this year, uh, uh, tonight. Um, oh, well, it's on Hulu, to... if anybody cares. It's on Hulu, okay, fair enough. Um... Oh, we... oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I think it's on Funimation as well, um, last I checked, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, so, because here's the thing, um, Netflix has been investing in anime heavily for a long time, and there have been a lot of questions is how well has that bet worked out for them? Um, you know, sure, sure, people are watching it, and that's fine, and they, they still keep funding it, and that's fine. But I think this is the this is the piece of evidence where they finally reveal, yes, like there has been an impact. It is clear, um, it's it's working. It's kind of funny though that it's you know it's not B stars, right? It's not any of the Netflix original stuff. It's yeah. Pokemon, which not too surprising, but that is kind of the reality there. Um, Pokemon. Exactly. Um, kind of an odd news story, but I really wanted to cover this um, because I just think it's really, really fun. Um, the Sony Life Insurance Company, yes, the Sony Life Insurance Company, um, uh, released uh, earlier um, its yearly data report on the various prefectures of Japan. There are 47 of them. Uh, they surveyed them on a bunch of stuff, including what is your favorite anime that is set in your prefecture? Because it's Japan, and they ask questions like this. Um, and so uh, FutabaNet, the pop culture website, released the survey results. Um, the ones that sort of leap out at me. Um, Tokyo's favorite anime set in Tokyo is Sezai-san. Okay, sure. Um, definitely a, a cultural um, uh, thing. Uh, Kyoto picked Sound Euphonium. Oh. You know, yeah. which I, I can understand that. Um, Okayama is rightly proud of being the home place of Tenchi Moyo. Um, Hiroshima chose In This Corner of the World, which is correct. Oh. Um, wow. Can't think of a better choice than that one. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, what was the other um, uh, notable ones? Um, Yamanashi picked Laid Back Camp, which again, oh. correct. Yeah. Uh, well <laughs> done. Um, and my, Ibaraki, of course. Girls in Panzer, for what it is that it's yes. known for. Um, there's some other fun ones. Um, I did not realize only yesterday was set in Yamagata Prefecture, and so they're very proud of that. Um, Kanagawa chose Slam Dunk. Um, Nagano chose Summer Wars, speaking of that. Gifu chose Your Name, because I cannot wow. imagine what the tourist uh, industry got out of Your Name. Must have been money up the wazoo. Um, and... Wow. Uh, what was the other interesting one? Um, Kumamoto, of course, that's my book of, book of friends. Um, and my favorite is that Gunma chose um, You Don't Know Gunma Yet, which is a partial parody tourism anime because the whole premise of the anime is that everyone keeps warning the main character not to go to Gunma because of what of an hole it is. So that's <laughs> hilarious that they chose that. As their favorite anime set in Gunma, granted, that's probably the only anime set in Gunma Prefecture. Um, but, you know, a fun thing. Where's Detective Conan set? Oh, that's a great question. It's got to be everywhere, right? Because there was an anime, yeah. uh, was it was it Tonikawa? Hmm. There was an anime I saw recently where they stopped at the train station somewhere, and they were like, in the anime, about something different. They go to a train station or an airport, and there's Detective Conan in the airport. And oh, it's all yeah. these little... And I was like, 
no, this is not real. And wherever it was, I don't remember. I looked it up. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, their airport has that. It's like yeah. all Detective Conan stuff everywhere. And it's oh, yeah. like, like you can. There's a museum in town that's all Detective Conan stuff. And I'm like, oh, so damn. I just looked it up. Um, uh, it is at a combination of real locations in Japan and fictional locations based on detective novels that influenced the series. Um, it is located in Baker City, which is apparently not a real city, but is sort of a pastiche of various real world locations. Okay. And then of course they visit a lot of actual physical locations in the city in the series. Um, so it's interesting. I, I did not know that. Now we know. And knowing's half the battle. Know. And knowing's half the battle. Yeah. <laughs> Kojo. <Yeah. laughs> um, all right, moving along. Um, so yeah. Yeah, you're, you're seeing this right. Um, when you think of VTuber, oh. <laughs> what do you think of? Yeah, you think of school days. Um, so the heroine of school days is going to debut as a virtual YouTuber on Christmas Eve. Because again, when you think of Christmas, you think of school days. Um, more information will be revealed at a later date. Um, Folks asked whether this was a temporary thing, and they said they're sort of still figuring that out, whether this will be a permanent thing or just a, a temporary thing. The reason Christmas Eve, in fairness, is that there is a streaming service in, J in Japan called Abema TV. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, and they have a tradition of airing school days back to back to back to back on Christmas Eve. So they just marathon school days on Christmas Eve, because why wouldn't you do that? Um, and so this sort of uh, coincides with the fifth year of the School Days Marathon on Abema TV. Um, I just don't even know where to begin on this one. Um, Why would you show that back to back to back, I, that show, on Christmas Eve? <laughs> what? Murder's fun? I guess. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I'm at a loss for that. There's a lot of good, funny Christmas episodes, single episodes, mm -hmm. not like that series. Yeah. Not a good choice. Not a good choice. It's weird, but it's remarkable. Like it becomes a news story, right? Yeah, it does. Like you know, that's how to get people to watch. I guess I don't know. So does, I mean, news story. So does running naked down the middle of a big street in a city. Well, <laughs> Nobody else is doing it. Why would the hell would these people do this thing? Like, it's school days. God, why? <laughs> And this is what makes me interested interested in it, because you can go two, two routes with this. You can either just make her a VTuber. She is just a personality, and she's playing video games or whatever, right? Or you can lean in hard. And, like, you know, on every stream, like, at some point in the middle of the stream, she just goes... Yeah. And then just goes on to things, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Now explain to me how does a VTuber work? And, and I, I, we, we talked a little bit about this before. They're not independent things. They're not like Miku. Correct. Um, they're is... they're a personification of a of, of a actual YouTube personality, or is it divorced well, even from that? Um, VTuber software is a three D model of an anime character that is set up right. to react to a webcam. So that the motions on the webcam are mapped to the 3D model. So the 3D model is projected on is is displayed on a screen, and then the webcam maps to a human being's behavior. Now, the complexity there is that there are people who debut as VTubers having no YouTube experience. They are simply the person uh, behind that VTuber, you know, um, model. Um, so, in a sense, you know, that VTuber is the YouTube personality. Um, you know, there's no other person who is now taking on that VTuber role. And it's not like independent kind of Siri thing where it just responds to stuff and there's nothing really kind of going on behind it. You, you are sitting there making it do its thing. Correct. There's a human controlling it. As her. Right. So, I mean... She, I mean, they're going to be doing off a script or something like that because you can't have that person like go completely off the reservation with their presentation of this character. Well, and that's the that's interesting the, thing because you know? I'm sure they have. It's not the voice actress. Yeah. Right. So they must have somebody doing it. 
Now, you can also do, obviously, um, um, you can manipulate your voice f through it. Right. Um, and you could also technically have, like, uh, pre-recorded sounds uh, if you wanted to do that. Right. But you can't do that for, obviously, everything. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Digital Puppet. Thank you, Jay. That's a perfect, perfect description of it. Uh, it's a digital puppet. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. But VTubers are really taking off in popularity. Um, you know, they're, they're certainly successful in that sense. So I, I'll be honest, the more we talk about it, this, the more this sounds like a marketing gimmick for the company. You'll have, uh, you know, yeah. and they'll, they'll do it and it'll get some, some buzz. And then the next time they announce a new, you know, adult visual novel, um, oh, it's the company that did that weird school days thing, right? Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit of this at, at, at the onset about, mm. you know, there is a little short, I don't know whether you consider it an anime or not, but mm. it's a collection of VTubers together right. in a shared space mm. and doing stuff. Uh, but, you know, as we discussed then, I still don't get why is that, you know what I mean? Why are you doing this? Is, why is this a thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, for a lot of, because of who I am, I don't know. Well, for a lot of folks are embarrassed to be seen on camera. Right. Um, also, in some ways, it can be simpler to manage all of the different bits and pieces of a stream when you're not also on stream, and it's, it's all one big digital interface, basically. And so you can sort of mm. have things coming in and out, and you have a chat on the side and all that stuff. And you're kind of looking at all of that as opposed to paying attention to your performance, so to speak. Um, so that, that okay. has some advantages. Um, I know there, there's one VTuber the that digital does... puppet acts for you, right. so you don't have to right. act. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Um, I know that there's there's one VTuber that does a lot of like anime history stuff, and mm -hmm. so um, it's it's really more lectures and then showing slides and and putting up text and doing doing drawings and so forth. And so if there's a cute girl sitting in the corner talking that looks better than just somebody who is sitting in the corner, you know, thinking about how to draw and how to do all that kind of stuff, right? So it, the visuals are kind okay. of... When, when I <clears throat> first put up my channel, low these many years ago, um, <clears throat> that if, if VTuber was was available back then, that's probably something I would have done mm. because I didn't put my, my face onto the channel for a very mm. long time. And I did actually what Brent described, which was, you know, just like a lot of different pictures and, and things and coming off and you would just hear my voice and that's, and that mm -hmm. would be it. But this is more of a, of a thing for, you know, like if, if, if it was back then this would be actual interesting person to look at who's also doing things mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. can do more manipulation of what you're doing to, to keep interest in, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. yeah. I gotcha. So we'll see. Um, it, it certainly got us talking. Who knows? Yes. Um, any news is good news. Any new, in, mm. uh, <laughs> also this week, a few news stories that we may talk about. We might not, but just wanted to at least mention in passing. First, rather seriously, um, prosecutors have officially indicted the suspect of the Kyoto Animation Fire. Um, uh, he's being, um, uh, the suspect is being indicted on charges of murder, attempted murder, arson, breaking and entering, and violating the firearms and sword control law. Um, and apparently medical experts have determined that the suspect is likely to be mentally competent to stand trial. Um, okay. so... Oh, he's, he's gonna get it in the neck. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so th this yeah. is, this is not gonna end well, um, for, uh, for him, quite likely. Uh, they're taking it very seriously, as well they should. Um, yeah. The final uh, uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 wrapped later uh, last uh, 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 a few days ago. Um, they posted on Twitter that all compositing and editing is completed for Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. Um, and so it is Boy. moving along. Um, they finished recording dialogue, including retakes on November 19th, so certainly chugging along and making progress. Uh, the film is currently planning to open on January 23rd, after a delay due to, of course, COVID-19. 
Um, so we are close to the final Evangelion film, and I say that because the poster says bye-bye all of Evangelion on it. So that's kind of a hit. Um, oh, yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> I'm with you. Except for the, yeah. the live stage show, the ice show, <laughs> right. and the musical. Yes. Once, well, once they launch those, then that'll be the end of the whole franchise. Well, and <laughs> let's, not forget, the ground. let's not forget, they literally made a movie whose name is The End of Evangelion 20 years ago. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> yep. just say it. Just say it. <laughs> the End of Evangelion. This time we're serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Will it beat Mugen Train, though? Ooh. Oh. Take, yes. I would take that bet because I'm going to believe Mugen Train will steamroll the crap out of that. I don't, I, there's no stop That's in Mugen interesting. Train. interesting. Eva is such a, I would love to look in to the, like, to the performance of the other Eva movies. Because um, I get the sense that it's going to be hard for Eva to, to have that kind of thing. And actually, we'll have a story about that a little later on, about why that might not be the case. But we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, Dragon Quest getting a theme park. Um, uh, technically an island. Um, an attraction area called Dragon Quest Island at a theme park uh, in Japan, opening in spring of 2021. It'll uh, recreate the world across 8,000 square meters. Pretty cool. Um, there is a live-action Yu Yu Hakusho series coming to Netflix, because the world asked for that, apparently. Um, the next cr uh, creation by the creators of Death Note and Bakuman, called Platinum End, is getting a TV anime series in fall of 2021, so look forward to that. Um, the Record of Ragnarok manga is also getting an anime. Um, the uh, series, I'm going to have to get the title of exactly here, um, A Harem in an Alternate World Dungeon is getting an anime series as well, light novel series. And yes, if you heard that title, that's exactly what it is. Um, uh, to absolutely no one's surprise, I, I'm just waiting to hear people faint when they hear this, there's a new Beyblade coming, anime coming in 2021. Um, I, I know, shocker. Oh. Um, there's also uh, an anime adaptation of Chainsaw Man, uh, which is a, uh, a sort of bloody, gory manga series, very over-the-top um, kind of gory thing about a, a... Essentially, Edward Chainsaw Hands is the, the premise there, if you can imagine that. I've been seeing a lot um, of, like, the, the cover imagery from, the, from whatever the manga or whatever it is, mm. where in, instead of, what is it, gun, no gun life? The guy has a revolver oh, yeah. for a head. Mm -hmm. Or for a um, head. Chainsaw, yeah. and literally, his skull is the chainsaw. <laughs> That's the <laughs> image I keep seeing. And I'm like, yeah, his, what? Yeah, his skull is this sort of bird beak chainsaw thing. And then he has yeah. chainsaws on his arms. Yeah, it's just like, this is just insanity. And it's supposed to be quite gory. So, okay, <laughs> yep. there we go. Mm -hmm. This will be an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, I checked out some of the reviews on Amazon, which, you know, asterisk um and it, it seemed to be like you know if you like a somewhat ridiculous over the top gory shonen -y kind of action thing that's exactly what this is like it gives yeah. you precisely that you know so sounds like fun it's done by mappa so this yeah it'll yeah. be interesting it should definitely be interesting <laughs> be an interesting presentation I, I yeah think, i think i'll take that over the live action you you are yeah um, agreed <laughs> I, I'm still, and why I'm still burned yeah. by the by the live action Death Note on yeah. Netflix. I still, uh, oh, yeah, I I I don't know how you do Yu Yu Hakusho live action series, right? Uh, Ghost right. Whisperer with with had Jennifer Love Hewitt. I think that was what it was. Okay, um, back twenty some odd years ago, mm -hmm. um, and she sees like spirits and she helps them resolve their issues in the okay. in the live world mm -hmm. i all i can envision is doing yu yu hakusho that way yeah. being like oh mm -hmm. spirit detectives oh no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> i i just want to see how they're going to make those characters i mean those are those are character designs of a time past 
Kuwabara. Yeah. Yeah. Kuwabara. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's that's yeah. who, who who gets to wear that way? Yeah. Who gets to wear that way? <laughs> I'm yeah. very curious. Um uh not the only animation though. Um and there's an adaptation coming of Love of Kill, the manga, uh, which is basically about um, a male assassin who is kind of to kill a female assassin. But guess what? They fall in love. Oh. So uh, that is coming. Didn't we, didn't we already have this movie with Brad Pitt? Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Hey, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah go figure that out. Um, yeah. Uh, so should be should be interesting. Um I'm not sure that is in Monthly Comic Gene, which is, I don't even know what genre that is. I don't know. Interesting. Um, mm. So that uh, that uh, magazine also published The Children Who Came From Deep Below, which sounds vaguely familiar. Um, Double Gauge, Malicious Code, Mikagora School Suite, and Nirvana. Don't know. Um, okay. So I'm not sure if it's going to be like Sanini or Shoujo-y. I've got no idea. Um, mm. Also, not the only uh, anime announcement. Um, the Night Beyond the Tricornered Window is also getting an anime announcement. That is a boys' love mystery manga. Uh, speaking of manga, we're getting a new Cells at Work volume of a manga. Uh, first time in three and a half years, we're getting a new volume of Cells at Work, which is awesome. Uh, and finally, Oricon. Um, Oricon Monitor Research specifically, um, carried out an internet poll about Demon Slayer, which revealed that over 90% of respondents are familiar with Demon Slayer. Like, they, they know what it is in Japan. Um, that, that is a thing. Wow. Across gender, across age. In fact, and this is the thing that sort of caught my, my attention, um, pretty much every quote they have from somebody talking about Demon Slayer is from somebody like 30 or over. Um, woman in her 30s said, yeah. quote, I would never have thought that at my age I would have a conversation about anime with my mother who is in her 60s, end quote. Um, wow. uh, woman in her 40s wow. said it was the first time she, her spouse, and their child watch a film together in the cinema. Um, and a man in his 60s said he was enjoying the series while letting his son explain it to him. Um, uh, but you have other folks. A man in his 30s remarked that his two-year-old daughter knows how to say Kinmetsu no Yaiba, uh, which, oh, no. <laughs> there we go. Um, and th so the point being that um, the series does seem to have a very mainstream appeal. Um, a lot of yeah. folks in Japan are watching it like, sort of across generations. Uh, it's definitely working there. Um, woman in her 30s says that uh, when going to karaoke, um, people of every age group will want to sing the theme songs to Demon Slayer. Um, so this wow. was uh, 3,800 members of the Oricon Monitor Research, uh, folks uh, ranging in age from teens to their 60s in late November. They were part of that poll. So the Mugen train keeps on chugging. Yes, it does. Damn. Yeah. Which, I mean, uh, it just, we, we know that it's generated so much buzz. Mm -hmm. Just, it just keeps it buzzing. Yeah. So I have to, you know, in Japan itself, you just can imagine that you've got people who are at, who just don't even know anything about it other than to ask the question, which means they're talking about it, which mm -hmm. means they're going on the internet, which means they're like, you know, uh, maybe I'll go see it because just everybody keeps talking about it. Yep. And it just keeps going. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. It just it, it never ends. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine being that one person in Japan <clears throat> a year from now who just goes, moving train, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been I'm living? I'm looking for the downtown cave? express train. In that cave over there? Mm, yeah, yeah, pretty much. No service. No service. No cell phone. Nothing. <laughs> um, that said, I'm the Buddhist temple in the mountains, and I just <laughs> prayed all day. <laughs> right now, there, there is sort of a, a a twist to all this, though. There's a second survey um, uh, conducted um, uh, earlier on where they asked elementary school children who they respect more. Um, their parents or Tanjiro from Demon Slayer, and a Tanjiro one out. Oh. So, <laughs> just saying, parents might want to have some conversations with your kids before and or after watching Mugen Train about respect. Um, so yeah, oh, 
you realize, of course, right now, somebody at some ministry in Japan is sitting making a, a broad slate of PSAs that feature Mugen Train characters. Yeah. Hey, kids, don't litter. Hey, kids, pay attention to your parents. <laughs> like, ah. Tanjiro the bear. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's all going to be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my. Uh, my gosh, Demon Slayer. I just, I just don't even know. I, I don't even... I, I can't even. I can't even. Um, but pretty awesome. That, that's, let's be honest. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the news. Uh, it sells this week. It. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say cells at work is getting more print time, and mm. we have cells at work. The second season's that's coming. Right. Oh, like, that's right. Like, jeez, this is good. Yeah, give me more of that, please. Yes. Um, uh, and it sounds like the new series is going to be um, different characters. Yeah. So looking forward to see the, what the key key visuals. Uh, mm -hmm. White blood cell is a female. Okay. Red yeah. blood cell is a male. Mm -hmm. And I think the platelet chons are all platelet coon. Oh, cool. I think I think I, that was the key visual yeah. I saw in the background that they were all like great elementary great. school boys versus. Mm -hmm. Elementary school girls. Interesting, because so, there are, because like, there are definitely boys in, in there are definitely boy platelets. Huh. But so most of just... like, like the little nendoroid at least I have, and there's a few others that are they show oh, them yeah. up front as girls. So in crowd scenes, I can't tell who anybody is from others. I just know the one little blonde platelet that's always yeah, like the lead girl. The, the lead girl, absolutely. Um, and they did not feature her in the platelet chan or kuns in the background of the new key visual so it's uh, like okay mm -hmm. i get you're basically just swapping everybody yeah exactly. to giving new characters to love mm -hmm. yay yep um i can't wait to see the killer t cells yeah. they're all the dudes in the black t-shirts and like really no nah, man like I can't wait to see them all swapped. <laughs> like, this is going to be cool. Pulling mm -hmm. out a knife and just, like, eliminating viruses covered in gore, and there are a bunch of, like, buff women. You're like, mm -hmm. damn, that would be cool. <laughs> we already have the maids, right? Whatever yeah. They are. Yeah, you know? It, it works. Macrophage. Yeah. Macrophage, that's right. Absolutely. Um, 